Hey guys, I'm Lindsay Moore and I'm an aspiring cook living on Lake Bowen in Spartanburg, South Carolina. My blog, Just a Little Organic, JLo for short, chronicles my life as I share my passion for food, healthy living, and nature with friends and family. Now thanks to Ingalls, I'm going to cook with you. I'll take you through step by step and show you how to bring some of my favorites to your kitchen table. Today we're starting out at Ingalls getting ingredients to make my one pot chicken pie art, or pounded chicken as we call it in Spartanburg with cauliflower and lemon thyme butter sauce. Here's what we need. One, one and a quarter or one and a half pound package of organic Harvest Farms boneless, skinless chicken breast, thin if available. Kosher salt and black pepper, three tablespoons of olive oil, one head of cauliflower, or about one and a half pounds cut into bite-sized florets, an eight ounce bag of sugar snap peas, a half a pint or 12 to 15 cherry tomatoes one cup of low sodium or homemade chicken broth or stock, four to six sprigs of thyme, plus one tablespoon chopped for garnish, half a lemon very thinly sliced, and two tablespoons of unsalted butter. Remember, this is all on the website at ingles-markets.com, so you can print out a list and take it with you or pull it up on your phone when you're at the store. Now let's get cooking. Hey guys, welcome to my kitchen. Today we're gonna be making chicken pie art, which is just pounded chicken with cauliflower and a delicious lemon thyme butter sauce. It's fresh, easy, simple to do, one pot. You can have it ready in 20 minutes or less. It's a great dish to have when you come home from work and you don't have a lot of time or when you have company over or um, really any time. It's just great, flavorful, everybody likes it, full of butter, delicious. So let's get started. The first step is to pat your chicken dry. You just want to take a paper towel and lightly pat dry to take out the moisture because moisture creates steam and you want that nice brownness on your chicken and you won't get that if it's too wet. At Ingalls you can get thinly sliced chicken breasts already done for you or if you have regular skinless chicken breasts all you have to do is use a little trick that my mama showed me. You get a Ziploc bag and you place your chicken breasts in the Ziploc bag. You can do this one or two at a time. It just depends on how big your chicken is. Um, and since these are already thinly sliced, we don't, need, we don't need to pound them too hard, but you can take your aggression out on these chicken breasts and just don't be shy, pound them. So they're about this thin, about an inch, half an inch. It might be my favorite part. And the great thing about using a Ziploc bag is that you can just throw it away after and you don't have that big of a mess to clean up. So we're going to place these on the plate. And then I am going to throw this away and wash my hands. Okay, next we're going to season our chicken lightly with kosher salt and black pepper. It'll end up being about a teaspoon of salt and a fourth of a teaspoon of pepper, roughly. But you can really just eyeball this. Don't worry about exactly how much you have. And we're going to take some fresh ground pepper, black pepper. And we're going to season both sides as evenly as possible. And you can do more or less pepper. If somebody in your family doesn't like pepper, use less pepper. It'll be okay. All right, we're going to take a fork and flip them. We don't want to touch our chicken again so that um, every time we touch something, we won't contaminate. Okay, we're going to season this side with salt. Now that we've seasoned our chicken, we're going to head on over to the stove. We're going to heat our pan to medium-high heat. We're going to grab two tablespoons of olive oil. All right, we're going to swirl the olive oil around just to evenly coat the pan. And it should be hot and ready to go. Make sure you put your chicken in away from you so that the oil doesn't splash up on you. All right, we're going to let the cooked chicken cook just like this for two to three minutes. Um, and then we're going to flip them and we're just going to let them cook for 30 seconds or it could be two minutes. It just depends on how thinly you pounded your chicken. 
and you'll know it's ready when you can easily pull the chicken up. These are cooking in olive oil, but if you don't have olive oil, you can use canola oil or a basil infused olive oil or any kind of oil or fat that you would like to use at this point. It just needs to be enough to where it allows the browning. Okay, now that these come off easily, we're going to flip each one. They have a nice crispy brown layer. This one might not quite be done. When they're easy to flip, you just flip them for another 30 seconds. You're going to want these to cook all the way through on the stove top, so make sure that they're cooked through. They will cook a little bit when you put them on the platter and cover them with aluminum foil, so you want to make sure not to overcook them. They'll feel firm and you'll know they're done. And again, they'll come off easily from the pan. Okay, I've got a nice big platter. And I'm just going to take my chicken, place them on the platter, and cover them with aluminum foil. Making sure our chicken's nicely covered. The first thing we're going to do is put in our cauliflower. And next we'll put in our sugar snap peas. And you can get these sugar snap peas at Ingalls. And if you don't like sugar snap peas, you don't have to use them. This is totally optional in this recipe. I just like to give it an extra crunch. It gives it a little and some color. So you'll mix those around. And then next in goes our cup of chicken broth or stock. It doesn't matter. It's up to you. But my mom swears by this Kitchen Basics chicken stock that you can get at Ingalls. Then we're going to add our lemons. And our fresh sprigs of thyme. I say four to six sprigs, but it really just depends on your preference. We're going to give this a nice stir. The lemon and the thyme really give this dish a nice fresh springtime flavor. Now that all of our cauliflower and sugar snap peas are coated with the broth, we're going to cover and we're going to turn the heat back up to medium. And we're going to let this cook for about eight minutes or so, just until the cauliflower is soft, not soft, but tender. And the sugar snap peas will be a little bit tender too. And after this cooks, we're going to add our tomatoes in for about a minute. We don't want to put those in right now or they will just burst and it won't be any good. So we'll let this cook for about eight minutes and then we will come back. Okay, our cauliflower and our sugar snap peas have been cooking for about a minute and I've grabbed a slotted spoon and pot holders because this is going to be very hot. But I just want to double check and make sure that our broth hasn't evaporated. And I'm going to give it another quick little stir. Everything's looking good and it is smelling great. I smelled the thyme and the lemon. It's all nice and even. Okay, I'm going to check our, chick our cauliflower one more time. Ooh, yum. Everything's still looking good, and the thyme and the lemon are really incorporating into the cauliflower and the chicken broth. It just smells delicious, and it looks like we've got plenty of broth in there. I'm just going to check to see how tender our cauliflower is looking great. I'd say it has a, about another minute or so, so we're going to just put the top back on and grab our tomatoes. We're going to put our tomatoes in.
Give it a nice stir. And put the top back on. We're going to let the tomatoes cook in there for not very long, just about a minute, because um, we don't want them to burst. And then we should be ready to transfer the vegetables to the platter and get to making our sauce. Now that it's been a minute, we're going to turn off our heat, remove the pan from the heat. Oh, it's a little heavy. And it looks like our veggies have steamed very nicely. We're going to take the foil off of our chicken. We're just going to move it to the side a little bit. And we're going to take a slotted spoon and add our veggies straight to the platter. I'm going to slide the platter over towards me a little bit. And we're using a slotted spoon so that we can keep all that juicy broth in the pan to use for our sauce. As you can see, this, is, this really is a great dish for company because you can showcase all of these colorful veggies on one plate and from one pan. You have greens and reds and yellows and whites. It just makes it look so fresh and natural. Okay, now that we've got all our veggies on the plate, we are going to grab our butter and put it in the pan and whisk quickly so that it doesn't separate from the broth. And this will be our sauce. It's going to give it a nice, salty, buttery flavor. Okay. Our sauce is ready and all we have to do is pour the sauce onto the top of the chicken and the veggies. I'm going to grab another pot holder. If you want to make this dish a little bit pretty and this is what you're going to serve off of, you can just move your chicken to the top of the veggies. So it's all one nice big big meal. Scoot some over a little bit. And there you have a huge plate of veggies topped with some nice crispy chicken and then we are going to add our sauce. Be careful when you do this. You don't want to spill it. And we're just going to drizzle. Drizzle, drizzle, drizzle. And next we are going to grab our tablespoon of chopped thyme and we're just going to sprinkle a little bit for garnish. And we're done. Look how good this looks. We've got our veggies on the bottom, our chicken on the top, and the drizzle of lemon thyme butter sauce all over. And we have nice whites and greens and reds and yellows. I think it is definitely worthy of company dinner. We're out of time for today, but I want to thank you so much for joining me here at the Ingalls Table. Remember, you can find this recipe, videos, photos, and more on the website at ingalls-markets.com. Until next time, I'll see you online.